This video is going to help you to remember the signs for inequalities and also allow you to write down integers or whole numbers which satisfy an inequality. Let's have a recap of what these symbols here mean. Let's imagine that we've got 3 and 7. We want to put a symbol in between. We can't put 3 equals 7. That is not true. So this is where our inequality symbols come in. We need to have a symbol in there which means less than or greater than. Let's have a think about a number line. Is 3 less than or is it greater than 7? We're reading from left to right here. 3 is less than 7. If 3 is less than 7, we need a symbol in here which means is less than. The symbol that we're looking for is this one here. 3 is less than 7. The way I like to remember it is that it looks like a little L on its side. So it looks like a less than. L for less than. Let's have a look at another one here. 4 and minus 5. What we want in here is something which says 4 is less than or is more than minus 5. Try to decide which one you think it is. Is it less than minus 5 or is it more than minus 5? One way to help you decide is to think about a number line. Where's 4 on the number line? Where's minus 5? So 4 is greater than minus 5. And for the symbol which means is greater than, it's the other way around. It doesn't look like an L. Often questions will ask you to suggest a possible value. Imagine you see this. That N stands for a number. What number could you put in its place? Quite often it's useful to put a box instead of an N. What numbers could you put into that box? Could you put a 3 in that box? Could you put a 5 in that box? Could you put a 6.5 in that box? In fact, you could put any number in that box which is less than 7. Let's have a look at another inequality. n is less than 8 but is also greater than 3. When you see an inequality like this with a less than, less than and a letter in between, what it means is that the letter, the value of that letter is between 3 and 8. So if I think about this in terms of a box, what numbers could I put in the box? Could I put 2 in the box? No. 2 is not between 3 and 8. Could I put a 4 in the box? Yes, I could. Could I put a 5 in the box? Yes. It's between 3 and 8. Could I put a 6? Yes. Could I put a 6.5? Yes. Nothing is stopping me putting decimal numbers. Could I put 7.9? Yes. It's still between 3 and 8. Could I put 8? No. I'm not allowed to put 8 because this sign means that the number in the box must be less than 8. It's not allowed to be equal to 8.
let's have a look at a couple more symbols. This symbol here with an extra line underneath it, it still looks like an L, so it's still a less than, but it has an extra line, and this means that N is less than or equal to 8. The symbol means less than or equal to. So if I asked us to suggest numbers that n could possibly be, we would start with 8. It's allowed to be 8. It's allowed to be 7. It's allowed to be 6 or 5 or 4 or 3 or 2. In fact, it's allowed to be 7.3 or 6.5 or 5.1. It's allowed to be any number which is less than or equal to 8. There's one final type of question which is commonly asked. It will ask you something like this. List all the possible integer values of n. And it will give you an inequality. To be able to do this properly, you need to know that the word integer means whole numbers no decimal points are allowed. So what we have to do is we have to provide a list of all the numbers that are between 4 and 7. Well 5 and 6 are obvious ones. But these extra little lines here and here mean that 4 and 7 are all allowed. So n could equal any of those integers. Remember, I'm sticking to whole numbers because it says the word integer. Another way of putting it is for examiners to say list all the integer values of n that satisfy and then they give you an inequality so this is a second way of phrasing it this word satisfy just means the same as we had before just means we've got to find numbers that work in the inequality so let's list all the integer values of n that satisfy uh, let's have minus 1 up to 6 so let's try getting some numbers down on the paper first. The first thing I would do is go at the ones that are obvious in the middle here. So in between minus 1 and 6 are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And now I need to look at the end points. The minus 1. Is the minus 1 allowed? No. N cannot equal minus 1. Is the 6 allowed? Yes, it is allowed because there's that extra little line. So our possible integer values of n, in this case, are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Let's just do one last one. List all the integer values of n that satisfy n is between minus 2.9 and 5.4. So let's start off with some integer values in between those numbers. 0, 1, 2, 
three, four, five. And going into the negative numbers, you can have minus one, you can have minus two. Now let's look at these endpoints. Are we allowed to include 5.4? Well, technically, our inequality says yes. But the question did ask for integer values. So if I included 5.4 on my list, that would be wrong. It's not an integer. Similarly, if I came all the way down to minus 2.9 and thought, yes, I can write that down because there's a little equals there, little extra bit, which means it's allowed to be equal to minus 2.9. But actually, the question itself, the words tell you, you're not allowed that. It's got to be an integer. So the top things to remember about inequality signs and about integers. Inequality symbols, that one, which looks a bit like an L and can turn into an L, is the less than symbol. This one is not. This one is more than or greater than. If it's got a little equals symbol on it, means, in this case, less than or equal to. And if you see the word integer, it means a whole number, no decimals.